Hello and welcome to Newsmax TV. I'm John Bachman. Joining me right now is Dr. Ted Baer. He is the founder and publisher of Movie Guide. He's also the chairman of the Christian Film and Television Commission Ministry. And right now we're going to talk about a new film, plus everything else that Dr. Baer is working on. The new film is called Grace Unplugged. Thanks for being with us, Dr. Baer. Oh, it's great to be with you. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's our pleasure. So Grace Unplugged is a story of a character named Grace Trey, who in this movie has just turned 18 and leaves her singing gig at her local church to head out to L.A. where she hopes to grow her musical career, but her journey is filled with moral pitfalls. The story is also about the relationship of Grace and her father, who is the worship leader at her church before Grace leaves for L.A. So, Dr. Bear, this uh, is a somewhat familiar story, but a new twist here. What do you think moviegoers will take away from Grace's story? Well, I think what they're going to take away is uh, reconciliation within families, but they're going to be entertained. It is an extremely entertaining movie. Uh, and that's because of the people behind it. Uh, it was, uh, I showed it at Baylor to a bunch of college students, and uh, the feedback was that this was the, <laughs> the best Hollywood movie they've seen on a theme of uh, faith. And, of course, it's a prodigal daughter story. Now, there is another prodigal uh, son story that I love. It's called Finding Nemo. Andrew Stanton is a friend, and he got to our Movie Guide Awards, and he said his five-year-old wanted to find out about what the prodigal son meant, so he made Finding Nemo. But this is uh, made by a bunch of Hollywood people, some of them who've become quite dear and uh, good friends. One of them, uh, uh, surprisingly enough, funded a lot of horror movies, and another one is a studio head who uh, uh, released a lot of horror movies, and then another one is uh, a guy who was head of the company that did uh, uh, Black Hawk Down and all sorts of intense movies for many years, and he's come to Christ, and his life's turned around, or he's rediscovered Christ, and, and another one's the head of the largest... Uh, uh, third largest film finance company. So the, these are Hollywood people. The reason I go through that litany, who have made a very entertaining movie. So if you want to be entertained and still have your children get the message that God has a plan for their life and they may not uh, want to go off the deep end and jump into uh, uh, the abyss of being a prodigal child, this is a great, great movie for those children. And the music is, is uh, pretty amazing in the film as well. You know, we talked about these prodigal son and prodigal daughter stories. There's so much, there's, you know, so much to learn from these stories, and I think every parent uses the, these types of stories to teach their kids something. But in this particular film, what are some of the challenges and struggles that Grace has to go through um, that other kids who are not necessarily seeking a musical career in Los Angeles might recognize and learn from by seeing the movie? Well, I didn't grow up in the church. You know, my parents were stars in the 30s, and uh, uh, I financed five feature films, and then I came to Christ at the age of 28. <laughs> so uh, I come from a different direction. But, you know, my four children grew up in a, in a Christian family, and they've done absolutely great. But many of their friends and things, you go through a period, whether it's, uh, you know, going around the world and doing, uh, you know, working in a strange area in Cambodia or doing something else, there are many people that are pulled by uh, just the desire to uh, differentiate themselves. So I'm going to be very gentle about this from their parents. And it shows the tension between the parents. The father, uh, you know, had the life of, uh, of fame and fortune. He was a star. He, uh, he crashed and burned and he almost OD'd. I can relate to that because I, I was in the same position. And uh, so he doesn't want her to get into that and, of course, she can't understand how that could be bad. So when she goes to L.A., uh, the temptations she faces are the temptations that I think everybody faces, whether they go to L.A. or whether they go into the law. Uh, one of my children uh, is a lawyer and, uh, and uh, just about 30 now, and another one is off in Tasmania. So they, they, everybody faces these trials and tribulations, and you just have to uh, see that the answer is to uh, to love your child and uh, for the child to understand that the parents are not trying to be mean. They're trying to save you from self-destruction. Yeah, it's certainly part of life. Sometimes uh, the more of our parents we see in ourselves, the more we try to distance ourselves uh, right. from our parents. But hopefully kids come around in the end. You said, you said that perfectly. I mean, why did I give that long answer when you were just going to cut to the chase? Well, it's something I think, you know, every kid has, uh, has lived through. And I remember that uh, 
process quite well. And it turns out your parents are usually right. So uh, yeah. you, you learn a lot from them if you pay attention. Uh, but, you know, we, let's get back to this issue of the growth in, in the Christian film industry. We recently saw a former senator and former presidential candidate Rick Santorum announcing his new venture getting into the uh, Christian film industry. And there's been, uh, maybe it just it seems like it to me, but an increase in the popularity of these Christian films as well. And normally uh, in years past, they might not make it to a, a wide release, but we're, we're seeing more of these films in a wide release uh, and this one coming out uh, very soon as well. Do you agree? Do you think this is, is something that's happening? And if so, why do you think that is? Well, we've been sounding the, uh, the, the trumpet for a long time that movies with faith and values do better at the box office. If we were able to do so, I'd, uh, I'd show you some of our charts. We do a detailed economic analysis of the box office. We look at 122 criteria. So we look at all the film criteria, the semantics, the syntactics, all those fancy terms and, you know, the production values and the direction. But we also look at the worldview and the, and the values. And every year movies, and this includes The Passion of the Christ, that was not the biggest year for movies with faith and values, but every year going back as far as we've been doing this, which uh, was started with Sir John Templeton and the Templeton Foundation, uh, we see that uh, movies with faith and values do six, seven, eight times better uh, than the opposite. And we've been giving this to Hollywood every year at a big uh, gala. We give out a big prize for movies with faith and values. And, and it's funny because the consequences have borne fruit in ways that we didn't even expect. I was doing a uh, sponsoring a variety conference and the head of uh, the founder of Legendary Pictures, which is probably the biggest uh, production house that was housed at uh, Warner Brothers that did Batman, Superman. He was being asked, why did you put the Jesus symbolism into... Uh, uh, Superman, you know, he goes to church, they talk about him being the savior, etc. He said, uh, because of the movie God report, he said, you've shown that we can make more money, that's why I use the Jesus myth. And so somebody asked him if he was a Christian, and he was not. And, and on the way to the car, he had picked up like uh, 12 copies, big copies of our movie God report. That's not the report, that's just, but it's thick and it's just number after number. And he was taking him, and my assistant said, what are you doing with those? He says, we use these to make to raise money. So even at the biggest production house that's doing the biggest movies. So what we do is work behind the scenes in Hollywood. Now, at the same time, you are absolutely right that more and more people in the hinterland, uh, like a friend of mine, Alex Kendrick, who used to be my radio engineer and, and did uh, you know, also fireproof, flywheel, facing the giants, courageous are making movies and they're making better movies. Now what my word to those people is to learn the craft. You know, you're doing a great job uh, as an interviewer, but um, I'm, uh, many people think I can make a movie because I watched a movie <laughs> and they don't understand that when Hollywood spends $240 million, any six-year-old can tell the difference between a $240 million Wizard of Oz uh, uh, remake or, or uh, you know, a, a church film. So we need to make films that are as high quality and Grace Unplugged has that quality. That's why I love it. And I would agree with that. You know, look at the trailer of the film. I haven't had a chance to see the whole thing yet, but uh, it, it stacks up against any Hollywood picture. Uh, yeah. And, you know, you, you talked about all that money invested in these films, and you see the credits. You know where that money goes. It takes a lot of people to make a quality film. Uh, Grace Unplugged certainly uh, appears to be that as well. Ted Baer, thank you so much for being with us. And uh, if people want to learn more about the movie, where should they go to check it out? Uh, go to movieguide.org. That's movieguide.org. We send out free uh, e-newsletters. We do all of that. We love Newsmax. We think you're doing great work there. And give my best to Chris and everybody, okay? I certainly will. You can catch the movie in theater starting October 4th. Ted Bear, thanks so much for being with us. Okay, have a great day. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV.